Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about my entire writing journey up to this point in my life. I am so excited to do this video. I've been wanting to do it for quite a long time. I just feel like I'm in a really good point with my writing and I just feel like this is the perfect time to make this video. So yeah, we're going to be talking about my entire writing journey. I think I started writing when I was about five or six. It's really hard to remember exactly when because I have been doing it for so long. If you don't know, I'm currently 20 years old. I am turning 21 in July. So I've been doing this for quite a long time. Writing has just kind of always been something in my life. As soon as I could read and write, it's what I've been doing. Let's just start off with when I was a kid and when I first started writing. I was always the kid in class for any writing assignment who had to go up to my teacher to ask for more paper because I always needed more space. Back then my writing was also really big so that kind of played a part in it as well. The teacher would like give us one piece of paper and I would always ask for like two or three more and everyone was like oh of course Brittany needs more paper and it was just like this running thing that was always happening and I was always like so proud of myself. I was like yeah I need more paper please because I just I have so much story to tell but as a kid throughout elementary school I was always writing a story whether it be for a school assignment or just for fun I always remember writing a story and I have so many of them so I'm going to talk about some of the ones that kind of stand out to me that I remember vividly writing because there are a lot <laughs> okay so I think I have three full folders here and this isn't even all of them these are just the ones that i keep in my desk in my file folder drawer so these are going to be what i'm going to talk about today but not all of them just some of them okay so the earliest stories that i have that i remember writing were from 2007 so i was still six because it was before my birthday one of them was a school assignment so the first one that i vividly remember writing like i vividly remember writing it was a school assignment called my dragon so we were given this piece of paper that had a dragon on top and it's stamped as june 27th 2007 thank you to my teacher for always stamping our work and as you can see my writing was really really big so i remember sitting at my desk and we were writing the story and we had to write about a dragon and i don't remember if there was like a specific prompt or if, or if it was just like write about a dragon but i remember one of my best friends at the time named elizabeth was sitting across from me like directly across from me and we both looked at each other and we we're like let's name our dragons after each other so my dragon's name is elizabeth hers was Brittany, obviously and this is basically just a story about a girl who has a pet dragon and the dragon helps her do things and I think she has to let the dragon go and it's like an underwater dragon or something yeah so it says I named her Elizabeth but she could not live with me so I put her in the sea and she made lots of friends but under the sea it is really cold but this is a three page long story and I love the end of it it's so funny it says she is fire breathing she will always be my friend and she is really helpful when I can't get stuff because in my head I was like oh I'm really short so my dragon can help me get things off the top shelf because that was my six-year-old brain's logic and of course the story starts off with once upon a time but anyways i'm so happy that i still have this it's such a fond memory for me and it's definitely like we started here you know like this just i don't know it's just really fun to look at where my writing started and where it now is so i really cherish this and i'm so happy that i still have it okay so now in october of 2007 so i wrote a story and i vividly remember writing this one i was writing it at my grandma's house because i used to always sleep over at her house and so i remember i would just like take a paper and just sit down in my bed in her house and just just write a story so this one is called witches and cats on halloween so obviously i was in a halloween mood so this is the cover that i made for it which is just stunning I mean, how am I not in graphic design? How am I not a cover designer? So this is what it looks like. I think it's hilarious. I clearly edited my own story. So at least I knew that like editing was a thing because there's like blue pen all over my pencil marks. <laughs> So I guess I was editing my own story. And you know what? We love that for me. And this one also starts off with Once Upon a Time because, of course. And I don't remember, like, specifically anything about this story. Like, I literally don't know what it's about besides witches and, and cats on Halloween. But it is a two-page long story, single space, not double-sided. And I guess it was just about witches and cats. I'll read you the first and the last line. So the first line is, Once upon a time, a witch was very sad because she had no friends but her sister and her cat. Why is that a mood? <laughs> Anyways. Wow, what a sad witch. Okay, so the last sentence. What? What if it like such like an anticlimactic boring ending? Okay. Okay, it's nighttime. Let's brush, then floss, then a snack for the kid, then bedtime. 
Why would you brush them floss and get and then get a snack for the, the kid? Also, who's the kid? I think I need to reread this story one day. This is really funny. Anyways, so this is Witches and Cats on Halloween, and the only memory I have is vividly writing this and drawing this cover in my grandma's house. We love that for me. I love that I have all this stuff. Like, it's so, it's so nice. So another story that I wrote is one page double-sided, but it's called Max Had a Tooth Adventure. This is from July of 2008, but that's what it looks like. There's no cover on this one, but I vividly remember writing the story and then leaning over, like standing up, leaning over my kitchen table to write the title, and I thought it was a genius, Max Had a Tooth Adventure. This one does not start with Once Upon a Time. It starts with one morning, a boy named Max had a loose tooth. But yeah, it's basically just about a, a, a kid named Max who loses his tooth. It might involve the tooth fairy and getting money. That makes sense to me. It ends saying, I'm going to be a ghost, said mom. On Halloween day, Max's class had lots of fun. They made a play called The Witch and a Broomstick. What? Why is the mom going to be a ghost? Oh my god, he got another wiggly tooth. Oh, oh, Sam. It was not mom. It was his friend named Sam. I don't know how I misread that, but they, it's, it was almost Halloween and they were trying to decide what they were going to be for Halloween. So Sam said he was going to be a ghost. Anyways, I was very confused. I was like, did I just like take like a random depressing turn where the mom said she was going to die? So I guess it's just a story about Max losing his teeth. And it does say like great story Brittany at the top with like a star student sticker. I don't remember giving this to my teacher though like i'm pretty sure this was just my own thing but i can't tell if that's like my handwriting when i was older or if that was my teacher's handwriting so there's two things that could have happened here one it was a school assignment and i just don't remember and my teacher marked it or i marked it myself when i was pretending to play school at home because i was that kind of nerd who had a huge whiteboard in my basement and would constantly pretend to play school and i would just mark my own work Let's not talk about how lame I was as a kid. Okay, so another story. This is really fun for me to look back on. I love looking at this stuff. This next one is mildly terrifying and also could technically be like fan fiction. It's not really fan fiction, but I basically stole an idea from like a classic book and made it my own. So the story behind this one was another one that I wrote at my grandma's house and I vividly remember writing this as well. So I basically was in my bed in her house and there was a nightstand beside the bed and there's always a stack of books on the nightstand for us to read and there was a copy of Treasure Island and I looked at it and I remember thinking that sounds like a great idea for a story and so I made my own book called Treasure Island. <laughs> This never ceases to be like the funniest thing and I don't know why I'm sharing this on my channel. <laughs> oh my god. This is like, this is how I used to draw people. <laughs> oh my god. Also, I spelled island wrong. We love that for me. There's no date on this one, but the writing looks about the same as the Max Tooth Adventure one. So this was probably like 2008. This is terrifying. So that's the cover that I decided to make. Let's move on. But this one starts off with once upon a time, a good pirate in a ship. He was sailing from the island he was on. Excellent first sentence. Anyways, it's not even a full page story, which I think is hilarious. So this was my awesome drawing of a pirate. There's like obviously like a treasure box and there's like a parrot. There's very lopsided palm trees. There's this very tiny ship, which is literally just like a sailboat. And then I remember I got my dad to draw a picture for me on the next page. My dad draws this one character and he, he's always drawn him. So he turned him into a pirate and put him at the bottom of the page. So this was my ripoff of Treasure Island. I think that it's iconic. The next story I actually wrote for my teacher, my grade two, three teacher. Basically at the end of the year, the teachers would give each kid a present and it was usually like a book of some sort. And so I wanted to give my teacher a present of her own. And so I wrote her a story called The Lego World. <laughs> <laughs> and so I literally typed this up. I think this might have been one of the first stories that I ever typed up. And as you can see, I did not know what a paragraph was. And writing this story set my like entire trajectory for elementary school because I showed it to my uncle and he was like, you need to learn what paragraphs are, but he didn't explain to me what they were. So every year my teachers would ask us, what do you want to learn? And I would always be like, what, what is, is a, a paragraph? paragraph? Nobody would tell me what a paragraph was or like I didn't understand the concept of it. So me writing the story literally set me up to just constantly wonder what a paragraph was. Happy to tell you that I do now know what a paragraph is. This is a story about a kid named Andrew and he basically was obsessed with Lego 
out and he just wanted to make like an entire lego world he even made like blueprints and everything how long is this five pages long and all i remember from it is him making a lego world he had a sister his sister had a best friend and i think they were getting ready for like a school dance or something and maybe the sister's friend her boyfriend like broke up with her or something and so andrew i think offered to go to the dance with her i could be wrong it ends off with so one day andrew didn't like lego no more for some reason and enjoyed writing books instead when he grew up he was a famous author i spelled author wrong and he was very rich he did do a little lego once in a while though what a weird way to end a story i literally have not looked at the end of the story in a very long time it's very hard to read since there are no paragraphs and i also was not good at putting quotation mark i remember something else about writing this story if it was this story i remember not knowing how to put quotation marks like all i knew how to do was an apostrophe because i didn't know that you had to press like shift and then the apostrophe key to get the quotation and so i literally called my mom while she was at work and i was like how do i do a quotation mark so my poor mom is just at work and she's trying to explain to me how to use a keyboard essentially it was very funny but yeah, i remember just having so much fun writing this story and i was so proud of it when i gave it to my teacher that's the lego world this was my first venture into writing a story for somebody else and not myself and i'm quite proud of it even though it's garbage but like come on i think i was in grade two when i wrote this so like good for me for writing a five page story i'm proud of myself so then in grade four there was another assignment i don't know what the assignment was but i wrote a story called the halloween ghost so basically it's about a family who on halloween decide to go to a haunted house even though the mom says that she is terrified does not want to go in it's too scary they end up going in anyways and then the mom ends up having a heart attack and dying because she's so scared and so she ends up just dying and so there's like a funeral i think and then like the next halloween maybe they stayed home or something or they went back to like a haunted house i don't know they went somewhere and i believe they saw the ghost of the mom I'm really confused. Or maybe they were trying to resurrect her? I'm so confused. Hold up a minute. Oh, they were doing like an incantation or something to like bring the mom back to life. Oh my god, wait. She ended up coming back as a vampire. And she says, uh-oh, that could be a problem. I think I did the vampire spell. Oh, I know why that happened. I said do la magaga, which is all mixed up, but there's no redo spell. Sorry, she's gonna stay like that forever. Okay, and again, still didn't know what paragraphs were, so obviously no one from the time of grade 2 to 4 taught me how to do proper paragraphs. My teacher said, great writing, an excellent idea. You could be a little more brief and put more action into this one. I guess I got a good mark on this one. So this was weird, and I would like to not think about this again. Okay. Yeah, I just have, like, literally so, so many stories like everywhere because that's just the way that i am these next two i don't have printed out versions of i do have them somewhere on either my computer or like my mom's hard drive or something but i just i don't have them physically i think it was like the end of grade five beginning of grade six is when i did this story like i wanted to get it done by the end of grade five but i ended up not finishing it in time so i just did it over the summer but i wrote a story called granny cakes for my grade five teacher she's my favorite teacher love her so much i still talk to her if i like go to visit the school or whatever so i wrote this story called granny cakes it's basically about this kid don't remember his name but he basically has a home ec school assignment to bake all these cupcakes and he goes home he bakes the cupcakes and then his grandma eats all of the cupcakes and he's like what the hell like i need these cupcakes and so his grandma has to make him all new cupcakes that's what the story is about i thought it was really fun i really enjoyed it so i gave it to my grade five teacher when i was in grade six i think i gave it to her like on the first day or something but she was and still remains one of my biggest like supporters i don't know she's just like the sweetest lady i have a like writing vlog i think from 2019 where like i went to the school to visit like impromptu and she like saw me and the first thing she said she didn't say hello she just looked at me and she's like i still have your stories and it's just so sweet so like literally have not been her student for 11 years and she still has my stories like in her filing cabinet and knows exactly where they are she even read granny cakes to her class one time which is like really weird like it's just so flattering that she's just so supportive and she doesn't have to be she doesn't like i'm not in her class anymore i'm literally almost 21 years old and i haven't been in her class since i was 10 but it's just like oh 
she is just like the sweetest lady and I already know that when I do hopefully become published I am going to be sharing that news with her and being really excited and giving her like a copy of it or something but she is just literally the sweetest and I'm so grateful for her so I gave her that story and then in grade 7 I also wrote her a story called Red Eyes which was in my vampire phase because you know like Twilight like I was really into paranormal books there was like Vampire Academy and Twilight and things like that so I had to write my own vampire story so this one is very blurry to me I don't remember it exactly but I think it was about a girl who kept getting like flashes or had like a dream about like red eyes and I think maybe she dreamed about this like person with red eyes killing people and then she'd wake up and they'd actually be dead. I don't know if that's accurate or not but then I remember there was like one time where she saw like this red of flash eyes and all of a sudden the eyes were like actually in front of her like the vampire was there like he could like sense her or something I don't know and I, I do think I have a copy of it on my computer let me look real quick I don't know if I do or not <gasps> oh my god I totally do guys oh my god guys <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh my god, okay, and I did learn paragraphs at this point. There are paragraphs in this story. So it starts out, red eyes. That's what I saw when I looked at his face. Red eyes. Contacts, maybe? He was staring at me, and I could feel those red eyes looking into my soul. I had no idea what to do. How many times can I say red eyes in, like, a sentence? <laughs> the eyes were not just red. They were blood red. I had never seen red eyes before, and I'm pretty sure no one had red eyes, and yet he did. I then woke up. It was just a dream. So we, we started off in that cliche way of it being a dream. But this was 37 pages? Oh, that is a step up from everything else I told you guys about. It was 37 pages, and it had almost 14,000 words. How does it end? Okay, so the last paragraph is, I went out of consciousness for a second, or was it a minute? I wasn't sure. When I came back to my senses, I was lying in my bed. I got up and went to the mirror to see if I was actually there. I was. One problem though, I had the eyes of a vampire. I had red eyes. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. I need to actually read this story in its like entirety, but that is hilarious. I'm so happy that I looked to see if it was here because <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. But yeah, I loved that story when I wrote it. I thought it was so good. I loved the idea of it. And if you guys couldn't tell, like, now I only write contemporaries. But when I was younger, I wrote a lot of, like, paranormal, like, more fantasy-esque things. Which is so funny. I don't know when that, like switch happened to where I literally like I literally can't write a fantasy book like I don't think my brain has like the capacity to do it now so it's just like crazy that like when I was younger it's all I wrote like the only ideas I got were like fantasy paranormal type things which I just think is hilarious and then also in grade 7 I wrote a story called Eerie Mysteries this cover was designed by my best friend thank you Rochelle for doing this for me I remember her vividly doing this at lunch in our library at school so this is another like paranormal story so this story I think it's like 60 something pages. Oh, it's 53 pages. Handwritten, double sided. I was very passionate about this story. Me and my best friend even planned like five books. Like I remember being at her house and planning out like a five book series for this and like each one would do with like a different like supernatural paranormal creature. So yeah, this one is basically just about this guy. What is his name? Did I? I don't even think I gave him a first name. I think his name's just Mr. Lanson. I guess he didn't have a first name. I don't know. But basically about this guy, I think he was like on his way to get pizza or something and he passed like this like creepy store and he found a book called Eerie Mysteries and then something about it, he like turned into a ghost, I think. And then there was something about like a mirror with bloody writing on it, hence the bloody writing on the front of the book. But I was really passionate about this story. I vividly remember starting it in class. It's dated September 28th, 2011. Wait, no. This was grade 6. Why did I totally think this was grade 7? Grade 6 was 2011 to 2012 for me. Oh my god, I wrote this in grade 6. Love that for me. Wow, another cliche opening though. It said, it was a cold day on Saturday. <laughs> Many people were walking down the street on this wet, cold day. But I vividly remember writing that. I also titled it My Story at the time because I didn't know what I was going to call it. Oh, his name was George. I knew it. George Lanson. Okay, but I loved this story. I was so proud of it because it was longer than anything I had done. I also have like all my planning for like the rest of the series back here that I never ended up doing. I just loved it so much. Really proud of it. I thought it was fun. So 
that was that. I also tried to write a story, I think, in like grade 7 to like grade 8. It was like about angels, which I also have like some of the planning stuff. Maybe I should just pull it up real quick. Oh, here it is. I think I have parts of this printed out somewhere, but I don't know where it is. But it starts off with, I stopped walking when I felt a sharp pain in my back spreading to my chest. I fell to the ground in pain, and before I blocked out, I saw a figure running away with a knife. So this story was basically about my main character named Claire, and she was basically murdered. And then she woke up in this like limbo and she had the choice to either like move on and die and like go to heaven or like become an angel and like help other like lost souls or like what like other dead people to like become like a guardian angel or something this one was never finished it has 25 pages and almost 9,000 words but i never finished it and it's because i never properly outlined every anything and so i would always get stuck so i didn't know quite where i wanted to take this story but i remember that was also really fun so high school is where kind of the more serious writing started happening so there was this province-wide writing contest called Voices Visible. So you could basically submit either a short story or a poem and if you were chosen you would be like published in this bound book. So I did that twice. I did it in grade 8 and also in grade 10. So I have two books here that I had short stories published in. This one was actually also supposed to have a poem put in it but they never put it in so it's just short stories. So this one 2013 to 2014 I have mine bookmarked right there. It was called Storms Don't Last Forever, basically about a girl whose brother died and so she's at the funeral and then I believe she like sees his like empty room when she comes home or something. I think this is when I started writing only like contemporary things and then this one, I love the cover of this one. This one's another sad one, it's about a mom dying and like the main character is, like walking home from somewhere and she sees a place where she used to always go with her mom and she like breaks down and sobs. It's called a dark day. So I'm really proud of myself for these. I vividly remember getting the email saying that I got in and telling my parents and them just being so proud. I remember the teachers being so proud. My principal was proud and it was just like a really cool thing. I literally always have these on my desk because they're just like inspiring and make me really happy and it was the first time that like I saw my name in print in like a book which was really really cool and so I will cherish these forever. I love them so much and I'm just really proud of myself for getting into a short story contest because these were the only ones that I ever really submitted to and then I, I got into them which was really nice and I'm also proud of myself because of this one my grandparents read both of my grandmas read it and they both like shed a couple tears which I felt really proud of because I like making people cry <laughs> and then while in high school I wrote two full-length novels so the first book that I wrote was called Lost Girl this is it this is not the full book I was printing it at home also not double-sided and I just never got around to printing the entire thing I printed out 117 pages but this book was like I think over 300 or like close to 300 it was like 73,000 words or something this is basically about a girl named Sienna and she ends up falling in love with her best friend Spencer but then he ends up cheating on her and she has to like deal with heartbreak this book is basically all about like falling in love and then and then heartbreak I was proud of it when I did it do not like it now. I'm proud of myself that I did it because obviously this is the first book I ever finished. And actually I have most of the process of me writing this on my channel which is just so weird. So it's crazy to like go back and watch those videos and see myself like working on this book. I also have a lot of edits and stuff in here. And I did send this to Peyton and Julia to read when I finished the like first pass of like edits on it. So they're the only ones besides a couple of my like in real life friends who read this book. And they all seem to like it which is shocking to me because it's absolutely trash but I remember making myself cry writing this book so it was just so emotional I don't know I just remember being really proud of this I am still proud of it because if I hadn't written this first book then I wouldn't have been able to do everything else it all has to start somewhere and it started with Lost Girl for me I had never been able to finish a book before because I never outlined anything it was only when I started outlining that I could actually finish something so I'm really proud of myself for finishing this I wish I had the full thing printed out but I don't but still very very proud of this book so I wrote this in like 2015 2016 I'm pretty sure. The next book I wrote, I do have the full thing printed out and I did this in November of 2016. I have the entire process again documented on my channel but it's called Rewind. This is basically a book about a girl named Jo and her life has kind of gone like off the rails. She's not a very good person and her mom gets very upset. She ends up buying her this like old vintage typewriter at this like yard sale because Jo used to be a writer so her mom is like maybe if you get back into this you will like sort yourself out a little bit. So she ends up starting to write on the 
typewriter and there's like a magic key on the typewriter that she hits and it ends up transporting her back to I think it was 1958 so she is now stuck in the 50s and she has to try to find a way to get back home but the typewriter breaks and so she can't get back home until the typewriter is all like fixed so she ends up like building a little bit of a life in the 50s and has to decide at the end when the typewriter is actually like fixed if she wants to go home or not. I was like obsessed with the 50s and like the aesthetic of the 50s back in 2016. I still love like the music and like the aesthetic of the 50s now but I'm not as obsessed with it as I was but I was really proud of this book. It was just like a really fun story. I was thinking I was going to return to it one day but I don't think I'm going to. I just don't have like an interest in writing about the 50s. It's just over 52,000 words I think and it's 157 pages not double sided or anything but again still proud of this even though it's not very good and then in the tail end of grade 12 I think like around May or so I got the idea for Reasons Why Not To which is the current book that I'm still working on. So I got the idea for it. I started brainstorming it while still in high school and I wrote the first draft I believe like over the summer and maybe like a little bit after the summer. I don't remember the exact timeline of it but I did it in like a lot of different like NaNoWriMo's and it was then titled Kids in Love. For part of the first draft it was titled Kids in Love but by the end it was Reasons Why Not To. And I actually have the first draft printed out. This is the only book I've gotten like actually like professionally printed at like I think this one was at the UPS store because it was cheaper than Staples and this is the only one that's like coiled bound. It's actually like all printed out double-sided and everything. It has all my sticky notes in it because I did a lot of like editing from this draft because I'm currently on the sixth draft of this book which is insane but this is the first draft and I am again just so proud of this book even though I did rewrite the book from this first draft. I'm still just so proud of it. It is the book of my heart. I am obsessed with it and I'm especially really happy with where it is now and it's also funny because the original idea for this book is not at all what it turned into even for like this first draft. So like my initial idea for the book is completely different to what this first draft is for the most part. I think I kept like nuggets of the original idea. I also have no idea how this book turned into what it is today. Like at the beginning it didn't have anxiety representation in it. Like that was never my intention going into the book. But I think because I was going through a lot of anxiety in grade 12 and just in 2018 in general when I started writing this book, it just kind of naturally be became a part of the story. I think it was kind of my way of working through my own anxiety and just like putting it on paper but I don't believe it was like originally supposed to be there but I'm so happy that it is because that's like the whole book now. But yeah so in 2019 I printed out this first draft of it and I also believe I did the second draft of the book in 2019. And then to pause on this one for a minute I did the first draft of my book The Show Must Go On in November of 2019 for NaNoWriMo. I don't have a printed out version of the first draft of that book because I didn't like it and it was like severely underwritten but I did do that. It was like one of the hardest books that I've ever written. Also I just realized I didn't tell you guys the reasons why not to. It's about Reasons Why Not To is about my main character, Lila Gray, who suffers from anxiety and it's her dream to go to a book festival in California, but she has to get a job and also overcome her anxiety a bit in order to go. So back to the show must go on. It was really, really hard to write this book. So I was trying to make it different than Reasons Why Not To and I wanted to write about a character that was different from me because Lila is so similar to me in a lot of ways. So I was trying to write something that was a bit different. So I made her love musicals, which at the time I did not like musicals. And through this book, I ended up loving Loving musicals. I also wanted to play around with like a trope that I love. I decided to do a fake dating trope which was really fun but in general I just have a hard time connecting to this story so I need to figure out a way to make myself connect to it more because it's just so hard to write. So The Show Must Go On is about my main character Ellie. She's been cast as the lead in her high school's musical of Greece alongside someone she doesn't like and she ends up being roped into fake dating him. I like the idea of the story and I do want to love it one day but I just haven't been able to get to a place where I do love it. So 2020 I think has been the craziest year for writing thus far because I decided to go from draft two of Reasons Why Not To, so not this one but the second draft, I decided to take that draft and rewrite it again for draft three and that draft felt like I was gonna die. Like I genuinely felt like that revision was gonna kill me. It was so difficult. I was so tired of rewriting the book at that point. Like I was just like I just want something that I can revise and edit upon and not have to constantly rewrite but I did rewrite the majority of the book for draft three and then I finally sent the book off to Peyton and Julia to beta read and that was the first time anybody had seen that book which was crazy and it was such like an emotional experience. So while they had the book I decided to outline and work on draft two of The Show Must Go On which I ended up writing the entirety of in July Camp NaNoWriMo of 2020. I think it was like 73,000 words almost that I did in a month. That one was also like 80 to 90 percent a rewrite which was crazy and writing the second draft was not much easier. I've currently 
currently temporarily shelved that project. I do want to return to it desperately, but I just have other things I'd rather work on right now. So then the rest of 2020 and also the beginning of 2021 was completely focused on reasons why not to. So after I got the beta feedback from Peyton and Julia, I ended up doing the fourth draft of the book. I think I was doing that one until like November, maybe even like the first few days of December. And then I sent that draft back to Peyton, also to Alyssa and also to Kath. So I sent that draft to them and they read it all throughout December. So then in the beginning of January, I got all my edits back from all of them. I ended up doing the fifth draft in like a few days, I think. I think it was like a week or like just over a week. I don't even remember. And that fifth draft ended up being just over 86,000 words. And that is the draft that I submitted to Author Mentor Match. So if you have not been on my channel at all this year, I submitted to Author Mentor Match in January. And if you don't know what Author Mentor Match is, Author Mentor Match is this mentorship program where you submit the first 50 pages of your book along with a query letter and a synopsis to agented or published writers and if you get picked then you work with your mentor to revise your book and then they kind of are just there to mentor you in the publishing industry to help you with querying and everything like that and I genuinely did not know if I was going to be picked or not but I did end up getting in which is super super exciting you guys can watch my entire like vlog experience that I have up for that if you have not yet already it was one of the craziest experiences of my life and I'm literally so grateful that I did it. I'm so grateful that I was picked. My mentor is Melissa C. I am just so happy that I was able to get into that program. I'm also just so grateful in general because I've met so many amazing people from doing that program that I wouldn't have met prior. I have like a whole group chat on Discord of people that I'm just so obsessed with. Why am I gonna cry? What the hell is wrong with me? But I'm just obsessed with them. They are the most lovely people. They are so supportive and so talented and I'm literally just so obsessed with them and I wouldn't have met them if I didn't do Author Mentor Match and I'm just so proud of myself and of them. So after getting into Author Mentor Match, me and my mentor immediately jumped into revisions for draft six of Reasons Why Not To. I did a full revision of the book and I just sent it to her mid-April and I also sent it to those girls from my Discord chat. I'm, like I said, obsessed with them so a couple of them are reading it right now and I also sent it to Alyssa and Kirsten because Alyssa was really wanting to read the new draft and Kirsten hasn't read a single draft of it yet and she was really wanting to read it so I sent it to them as well. Let me tell you, it is really nerve-wracking to send your book to that many people at a time. So yeah, I thought that ending this writing journey video at getting into author mentor match would be the perfect place to end it because of everything that's going to be coming afterwards. I will probably be making a separate video for anything that's going to come after, hopefully getting an agent and getting a book deal. So the plan is to query hopefully at some point this year or early next year, which is just absolutely crazy. And I also have a new story idea that I'm working on. I'm currently brainstorming it while I'm waiting for my edits from Melissa. And that one is another YA contemporary. I haven't told you guys that much about it, but it's basically about a girl who had this guy friend and they were really, really close. They were like best friends. And then things kind of felt like they were going to be a bit more than that. She thought maybe they were going to get into a relationship and start dating. But then out of the blue, he just stops talking to her. So it deals a lot with like lost friendship and almost love, which are tropes that I really like and things that I really want to explore in a book. So that's kind of what that one is about. And like I said, I'm currently brainstorming it. But yeah, I genuinely cannot wait to see what happens next in my journey and I can't wait to document it all and share it with you guys because documenting my writing for the past however many years since like 2016 I'm pretty sure has just been my absolute favorite thing. I love looking back on writing vlogs and writing updates and just seeing how much I've grown and how much I've changed and just being able to literally see everything that I've done is really really fun and amazing and I love sharing it with you guys. I love hearing what you guys are working on. I love the support and the encouragement that you guys give me as well and I appreciate it literally so much. I just want to say thank you if you guys have been following my journey for any length of time because like I said I really do enjoy sharing it with you all but I hope you guys enjoyed kind of seeing my entire writing journey thus far literally from like age six up to age 21 almost so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did give it a huge thumbs up comment down below and let me know how long you have been writing like when did you start writing how did you get into writing and what has been your greatest accomplishment so far I'd really love to know. Subscribe if you have not yet already and I will see you guys next time. Bye!